Hello, Stats. Um, welcome back. This will be the part two video of chapter eight review. Um, we ended with question 20 on the multiple choice section. So uh, let me finish going over the rest with you guys here. Uh, so for number 21, we have which of the following would not decrease the width of a confidence interval? Pretty much the same questions that will be done before. Remember, the confidence interval would increase uh, if it says not decrease. If, uh, so that means that we're talking about when the confidence interval is increasing. That's when you actually increase the, uh, the confidence level or you would actually decrease the sample size. Um, so I think the decreasing the confidence interval here will actually decrease the width of the confidence interval. So three is not going to be true. Um, increasing the sample size will actually mean that it's going to decrease the confidence interval. So it's not one. So if you increase the standard deviation, you're actually talking about the width. So the spread will be a lot greater. So I believe 21 should be, therefore, yes, B. So only one that's left over is Roman numeral two. Increasing the standard deviation will increase the confidence interval. And quite honestly, you can kind of figure that out from the formula itself. That is a standard deviation of a sample proportions. And if you notice, that's the formula for the standard deviation. If this increases the plus and minus C, your overall width of the confidence interval should also therefore increase. Uh, number 22, a polling organization asks a random sample of 1,000 registered voters. I think I went over this in period two, but basically the problem here is this, the 100 respondents that were undecided. So because of these 100 respondents that were undecided, you never know if you're going to actually, if these people are going to actually answer with candidate A or B. Remember, we are trying to find out the large sample confidence interval for two proportions to estimate the difference in populations for A and B. So we're talking about like A minus B or B minus A in terms of proportions. But again, the whole problem is that we have this third group called undecided. So that is where your focus should be. The two sample proportions were not computed for independent samples. That's actually going to be fine. We're going to leave it on the side because um, when we say independent samples, do these two A and B have nothing to do with each other? Well, we have this undecided that actually can be part of A and part of B. So it can impact the probability of those two, depending on where, how these 100 undecided people decide. The sample size was too small. You want to eliminate that because one remember, three digit number usually is a good sample size there to begin with. The third category undecided makes the procedure invalid. That's true, but you really want to specify why that is. So I would really debate between A and C. D and E, if you read over, it doesn't really make that much sense. Sample proportions are different, therefore the variance is probably different. Okay, that's fine. But how does that impact the appropriateness of this procedure? Um, George should have taken the difference of those two and used a large sample confidence interval for a single proportion instead. Well, this number right here, um, that is just the difference of the two minus so that's p1 minus p2 and they use a large sample confidence interval okay how large should it be first of all we really can't use 500 to 400 because like i said these 100 undecided respondents is the issue the correct answer is a between a and c a is the lesser of the two evil it specifies as to why um, those 100 respondents can impact it's dependent upon those 100 people how they decide a or b which impacts the probability which therefore impacts the confidence interval number. Uh, number 23, in a study of the new antibody for children, that random sample of 64 showed 52. So if you do 52 out of 64, actually, it gives you exactly 0 0.1825. By just knowing that, you should be able to, you should be able to eliminate um, D and E. Um, the correct choice here would be A. If you guys go to 1, 2, 5, plus and minus Z times the square root of P hat, one minus p hat over n. So let's just type that all into the calculator here. So I'm gonna just pull that up from this. All right, so the cap, the uh, the formula says 95% confidence interval. I hope that you guys all recognize that's 1.96. So I'm just gonna do 1.96 times the square root of, uh, what is that, 0. 0.8125 times, 0.1875 divided by the sample size, which gives me that. So the correct answer here should be A. So it should be plus and minus 0 0.096. All right, number 24, we have a random sample of 432 voters that revealed that 100 are in favor 
of a certain bond issue. So that means that 100 is not the number that you want to start with. Rather, it's 100 out of 432, which should be 0.231. 95% confidence interval, we talked about how that's 1.96. So the answer here should be D. Again, I went over this with you in the class, so it should be all good. Number 25, um, 79%, so that's your probability. So I want to eliminate A, B, and C because it should have the P hat, one minus P hat in there. And then it says that it's got to be within 2.5 percentage points. Obviously, that is that. 2.33 is the Z star, Z score value. When you do 0 0.98 as your um, area, but you want to subtract that from one divided by two. So you're going to inverse norm of 0 0.01, 0 comma 1, and you should be able to get 2.33 from that. So the correct answer here should be D for this one. Oh, when the sample size is increased, what effect does this have on the size of the confidence interval? D and E you want to eliminate because you never know if it's going to double or half unless you quadruple or you take one fourth as much of the sample size. Um, you can't really specify those two words unless they're specifying how much, how much bigger that they have grown by. Um, when the sample size is increased, obviously your conference interval has to decrease. It makes it wider, is obviously the opposite of the something that we wanna say. Um, it has no effect, nope, it's gonna be B for this one. 27, a community wants to see if there's enough support, blah, 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 standard error. Please understand that the formula is this, plug everything in. 150 is your N, 42% is your P, so 0 0.42 times 0 0.58 over 150 and square rooting that number. Let me just show you that on the calculator real quick. Square root of 0 0.42 times, oh, times 0.58 divided by 5, 150, 0 0.04 should be the final answer. Uh, 28, we have 100 luxury cars and 250 non-luxury cars. Uh, we have out of the 250 non-luxury cars, 125 have the bumper. So we're going to write that. So non-luxury. And then we have luxury cars, 100. We have 30 of them have bumper stickers. We want to find out the difference in the proportion of non-luxury cars with bumper stickers and the proportion of luxury cars. So we're doing non-lux to lux. So 125 over 250 minus 30 over 100. I believe this should be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. So we're really looking at that. Okay, so we have all that. 90% confidence interval. Let's take a look at that in the inverse norm situation. I believe we have 1.645, but just to show you guys, um, I'm sorry, uh, where's the second bears? Inverse norm area here should be 0 0.9 in the middle. So this should be 0 0.05, 0 0.055 percent on either direction. Um, let's type everything in. So you do indeed get 1.645. So I'm going to eliminate B and D right out of the way. Now, looking at the equations themselves, you should notice that this absolutely makes um, no sense because we are talking about P1 times 1 minus P1 hat over N plus P2, 1 minus P2 hat over N. This has a lot of probabilities distributed and we're not really gonna look at it in that direction. So let's just plug everything in here. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then that's 250 for the non-luxury cars, 0.3 times, okay, so it's, I mean, I don't need to say anything more, just plug into the formula, which is this right here, and you should be able to get A for 28. Uh, 29, we have um, margin of error no more than 5% with 90% confidence interval, which means I'm going to use Z star as 1.645 square root of P hat 1 minus P hat over N. See what they're asking you find is what's just the close to the minimum number of consumers needed. So we're talking about the value of N. What is the smallest N value that needs to be in order for this to be true? Well, whenever they're asking you to do question like this and they don't specify P hat, please plug in 0 0.5 for this. So I'm going to type, I'm going to plug in 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, and we're going to solve this algebraically. The first thing we must do is to divide this away onto the other side like this. So I'm going to do that. Let's use the calculator to our advantage and do that for us, 1.645 like this. And then you're going to square both sides because we want to get rid of the square root symbol. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 over N is equal to 9.23 times 10 to the negative 4, if you will. And what you're going to do at this stage is you're just going to take this number and divide this part away if you do the algebra portion. So I'm going to say 0.25 because that's 0.5 times 0.5 divided by the answer here and I get n is 
um, that should be n is greater than or equal to 270.6. So the number n that actually satisfies the smallest number possible that is bigger than or equal to 270.6 is obviously b. 271 is bigger and it's the smallest minimum number of consumers compared to all of these other choices. Number 30, a consumer group just published a study uh, st stating that 72% of Americans believe corporations are not concerned about public safety with 90% confidence in a margin of error 2%. What does this mean? All right, so first of all, what does this mean if they say, um, if the poll were conducted again, there's a 90% chance that Americans who believe corporations are not concerned about safety are within margin of error 2%. Um, first of all, they just completely disregard the fact that we're talking about 72% from the get-go here. So they don't specify anything about that. So A is out of the question here. Um, there is 90% chance that the proportion of Americans who believe corporations are, are concerned public safety is between 70% to 74%. Now that sounds about right because we're actually involving the point estimate. We're going up 2%, down 2% with 90% confidence interval. That means that there is a 90% uh, chance that the proportion of Americans who believe corporations aren't concerned with public safety is between 70 and 74 percent. There's one thing I would kind of miss out on though is that they straight up say this is 90 percent chance whereas this confidence level should mean that when you do this over in the long run it should fall between those two numbers 70 74 percent when you do this over in a many simulated trials but we're going to leave b for now remember guys for 30 and questions like these i don't have a clear explanation other than the fact that you eliminate choices the best way you can and pick the best one the lesser of amongst all the evils here uh, from 90 percent of all the americans about 70 percent to 74 percent believe corporations are not concerned with public safety um, from 90 percent of all americans um First of all, if I had to pick between B and C, I would obviously pick B. B just sounds better than C would be. They're, they are 90% confident that the two percentage of Americans who believe corporations are not concerned with public safety is between 70% and 74%. D sounds even better because that is the template that I asked you to memorize for the confidence interval. So 70, 74% would capture the true percentage of Americans who believe corporations are not concerned and they're 90% confident. We are confident that blah, 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 blah. 90 out of 100 Americans who believe corporations are not concerned with public safety is 70% in 74% in repeated sampling. That just sounds very awkward. So I'm gonna eliminate E. The correct choice answer here is obviously D. Um, it's a template that we're used to. It's not talking about the level. So good rule of thumb, when they're asking for what does this mean, always interpret in terms of confidence interval wise. Uh, rather than the confidence level or anything like that. So always remember that template. We are blank percent confident that the two percentage of whatever is captured between those two intervals. SRS, the size of 100 is taken population 0 0.8, 400, 0 0.5. The sampling distributions of the difference in the sample proportion has what mean? Um, the sample of this difference in the sample proportions we have 0 0.8 success and we have 0 0.5. So I believe 31 here should simply just be A, right? So 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5. A city is interested in building a waste management facility in a certain area, 100 randomly selected. We have the um, confidence interval formula, 100 residents interviewed, 54 said no, four said yes, and 42 had no opinion. Okay, which of the following statements correct for this confidence interval? This confidence interval is valid. Okay, first of all, A, B, C, or D, E. First, we have to make a cutoff line. Wasn't this the same situation as before? Um, when we had yes and no and no opinion, uh, we basically cannot really determine from three different options. So I believe 32, yes, it should be eliminating A, B, and C. This is not valid because, well, there's going to be an issue with, first of all, not having uh, with, with the uh, no opinion response category. But let's just verify if this is also to be too, um, too small here as well. For 32, um, of the 100 residents interviewed, n times p is too small, it says. 100 randomly, so n times p with 100 times 54%, uh, n times p for yes, that is 100 times 4 out of 100, which is obviously less than 10. Uh, n times p equals 100 times 42 over 100. Um, this is the confidence interval was constructed from the sample. 
So which of the following statement is correct for the confidence interval here? Well, they're not going to be in. They're not going to be valid because uh, for this one, they said it was D. Of the 100 residents interviewed, 54 said no, four said yes, and 42 had no opinion. And n times p hat is too small. Yes. Um, well, for yes situation here, n times p is obviously way too small because it's not less than or equal to 10. So that actually satisfies the condition here. So if you're actually giving an answer for this, quite honestly, in, in all honesty, I would say you know, e is almost as good, but D is a little bit more structured in a manner form that you actually have NP is too small. And that's actually one of the proofs or conditions that you need to check when you do state, um, plan, do, and interpret. So D, they say, I believe it's the correct answer here because for the second one, for the yeses, the response is just too, the percentage is too small. And so you can't assume normality due to that. Uh, 33, 95% confidence interval for the difference between two population is that, which of the following statement is true. It is unlikely that the two, two population have the same proportions. Okay. So the middle value here, I believe was 0 0.13. So that's the critical, no, I'm sorry. That's the point estimate, 0 0.07, 0 0.19. So this, the, that's the confidence interval there. We are 95% confident the true difference between the population proportion is between 0.07 and 0.19. I love two. So let's just check with all the ones with twos in them. And we, the problem is 0 0.95 that the true difference between the population proportion is probably is 0 0.95. The true difference between the population is between 0.07 and 0.19. Uh, the probability is 0.95. No, we are talking about 95% confidence. So we want to speak it in that um, terminology rather than saying it like a number three. So I believe that 33 here should be, oh, I see. So it's, we're going to eliminate the one with E's in there. Yeah. Three doesn't sound about right just because two is the same, pretty much the same thing what three is saying, except two is the right way to go. It is unlikely that the two population have the same proportions. I mean, that just goes on without saying. We have a difference of 0 0.07 and 0.19. If they have the same proportions, then obviously your point estimate has to be at zero, right? So it should be C. So one should also be true. All right, so we're down to our free response question. A large Midwestern forest um, planted by CCC at the end depression is now too thick for safe tree growth. Sample of 204 trees that have 28% um, trees must be removed. Okay, so that's your probability. N is 204, P hat at 0 0.28. If the Forestry Commission wants to estimate the proportion of the total that will need to be removed, calculate the 95% confidence interval. Okay, so if they ask you for that, we're going to do state, plan, do, and then we're going to do interpret. So for tomorrow's FRQ, you must remember to do all these four components. Otherwise, you're going to get some points taken off. State. Um, 95, construct 95% confidence interval uh, for the, the, uh, as the proportion, P hat, proportion of the total forest population that needs to be removed. Sorry, my handwriting is not the best, but you know, that should be how I state the P hat here. Plan. So we're going to do one proportion Z test because we're doing only one variable. We only have one like sample size. We have one percentage. Uh, so the plan would be to check for the conditions. Do I have a randomized sample? Sample of 204 trees uh, found at 28%. Doesn't specify randomizations, but in most cases, you should be able to say randomize. 0.10 N is less than equal to um, and here, so does is the population bigger than at least 100? I mean, 204. I think we can assume that there's more than 2,040 trees in this forest or any forest for that matter. So check. And the last one here, we have n times p hat is greater than or equal to 10. So we have 0.28 times 204. Guys, that is obviously bigger than 10. And 0 0.72 is bigger than 204 which is also bigger than 10. So that rule of large count also checks. The only thing that bothers me is that they don't really say it's randomized or not. A sample of two or four trees found that, well, since we're talking about trees in a forest, I guess they didn't do any, they didn't tell, tell you whether it's going to be clustered, stratified or whatever. And trees, generally speaking, they're all different, 
you know, different in terms of like how, like, you know, one, one tree is different from another generally. So when they say that they took a sample of 204 trees from a forest, uh, we're just going to assume that it's going to be randomized here. I know that it's not specified, but for tomorrow, I'll make sure that it's specified for you in terms of randomization. So we check for the conditions for a plan. Let's do the formula. 95% confidence interval means we're going to do 1.96 times the p hat, 1 minus p hat over n, plus and minus the middle value, which is 0 0.28. That's our percentage value here. So 0 0.28 times 0 0.72 divided by 204, square root the whole thing. So what is my confidence interval going to be? So we were going to type this into our calculator. Uh, 1.96 times square root of. Uh, 0.28 times 0.72 divided by 204. And then we are going to add that from 0.28. And we're going to subtract that 0 0.2 from 0.28. So it seems like our confidence interval is from 0 0.21 to 0 0.34. And I believe that should be our correct answer. Yes. Um, and then interpretation, we are 90% or 90, I'm sorry, 95% confident that the true proportion of p hat, which in, which in turn um, indicates the true proportion of all the trees that needs to be removed from this forest. I'm just gonna skip that part of p hat is captured in the interval. I think in the interval between 0 0.21 comma 0 0.34. So somewhere along, the, this is what you wanna say. The answer key said, 95% confident the two proportion of trees needed to be removed is between 21.8 to 34.1%. So, okay, there we go. 35, a humane society uh, wanted to estimate within 95% confidence the proportion of households. Interpret the 95% confidence level. Guys, what this means is that, I mean, I'm going to just read out loud for you guys what the answer key says from what I want to see. It's the very, basically from the second line here. In the long run, uh, about 95% of the time, um, the intervals, the interval would succeed in capturing, sorry, in, in capturing the true proportion of households in the county that at least owns a dog. So I'm just going to copy and paste that right there. Just please state it out loud. I'm just going to just, because I'm running out of space and I can't really write that down. Um, we captured the actual value of population proportion. So you capture the actual value of the population proportion of the household in the country that owns at least one dog. So that is basically what it is. So in the long run, if you do this over and over and over again, 95% of the time, uh, the intervals would cap succeed in capturing the population proportion. Let's call this the population proportion. So I'm going to eliminate the P hat here. And that is what you want to say for part A. Interpreting the confidence level, by the way, versus interval. That's what we did for part D of the interpretation. We are blank percent confident. Please understand the difference between the two. So now we have the situation of 95% confidence interval with this. It says that a national pet products association claims that 39% of all American households own at least one dog. Does the Humane Society's interval estimate the provide, um, provide evidence that the proportion of dog owner is in its county is different? So let's just first calculate this. 0.417 plus and minus 0.119. So 0.417 plus 0.119, 0.417 minus 0.119. And this gives me about 0 0.298 comma 0 0.536. So is 39% captured? Yes, because it is within the interval. So the Humane Society interval estimate the provide evidence that the proportion of dog owners in this county is the, oh, I'm sorry, it's different from the claimed national population. No, actually, because the 95%, I'm sorry, the 39% is actually within the interval. So therefore it's not, it's not different. It's pretty much the same. Uh, how many households were selected in the Humane Society's example? Oh, so this is when you use this formula, 0 0.417 plus and minus 0 0.119. That is your result of P hat plus and minus one times, one minus P hat times P hat over N. Sorry, I forgot the little Z, um, Z times that amount. So P hat, we know that it's 0 0.47, 417. Now I'm gonna set this 0 0.119, your margin of error, equal to Z times square root of 0 0.417, times 0 0.583 over n, which is, I believe we're trying to figure that out. The z score 
we have 90%, I see 95% confidence interval means we're gonna use 1.96 for that. So we're gonna use 1.96 for this. We're gonna divide 1.96 onto the other side. We're gonna do a little bit of algebra. I'm gonna skip that portion over. Or actually, I'm gonna show it to you guys. So divide both sides by 1.96 like this. So 0.119 divided by uh, 1.96 gives me 0 0.060714 is equal to square root of 0 0.417 times 0 0.583 all over n. We're gonna square both sides like that so we can cancel out the square root. So square that. 0 0.003686 is equal to 0 0.417 times 0 0.583. So that is 0 0.24311 divided by n. You can just cross multiply these two together and divide away. And at the end, you're going to take that number, divide by this number, and you get n is about 65.95. But since we always want to make sure that the, um, the margin of error is within this boundary, we can't make it less than that. So I believe the n size should be about 66, which is the correct answer. All right, last question. According to Almanac, the percentage of adults 25 years of age and older who completed four more years of college is 23.6%. For females, 27.8% for males. A random sample of women and men were 25 years old or older was surveyed. Estimate the true difference in proportions of 95% confidence interval and compare your interval with the Almanac statistics. Okay, so random sample of women and men who were surveyed within these results. So this is your actual P hats that you want to use for this. And I said the difference in the proportion of the 95% confidence. Okay, so we're talking about the difference in proportion, which means we're going to do, um, I believe, to women to men for this one. So we have 100 over 350 minus 115 over 400. So oh, let's actually take a look at the numbers here. 350, 115 divided by 400. So we get about um, the percentage between these two is 0.2875, um, and I believe it's um, 0.2857. So we have, to, uh, unfortunately, if we do woman to male, it's actually going to give you a negative probability. So let's take a look at male to female instead so that we can actually get the positive probability for this one. So men to woman, we have 0 0.2875 minus 0 0.285714. So we're going to just do minus. So clear that minus this number from 2.2875 to 2.857. And eventually you're going to get 0 0.001785. And then I'm just going to stop right there. So that's a plus and minus. And now we're going to do our margin of error. Since it's 95% confidence, we, got, we all know that's 1.96 square root of uh, P hat 1 minus P hat over N plus P hat 1 minus P hat over N. But remember, this is all specific to males and females. So we have our percentage for males, 0.2875 times points, I believe 7125, if you add them all together, it's becoming the 100%. Over N1, which is, I believe the sample size of 350. No, I'm sorry, that's for women. For male is 400. So that's what you get. Uh, point, I believe for females, it was this one minus that answer times this divided by the sample size of 350. So I get that for this part right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that with 5.12 times e to the negative four, and you get this lovely number, 0 0.001095. Square root that number, multiply that by 1.96. So, my margin of error happens to be 0 0.06486 and our point estimate at 178. So sorry, it's, it's kind of cut off here. So I'm going to rewrite this 0 0.001785. So this should be our confidence interval uh, in which I am going to share with you guys um, if this actually makes sense. So construct a 95% confidence interval, proportion of 95. So plan SRS, we have found that out. And then we basically get these two intervals. So 0 0.001785 minus the answer here. 
and then 0 0.001785 plus the answer that we had from before. So our confidence interval states that it's from negative 0 0.06 to 0 0.066. And I believe that um, our, our answers that we have for this one, I think that because maybe I rounded this to the nearest like 10,000th place, my numbers are a little bit cut off, but if I check the answer key here, it doesn't differ away from that much. So estimate the true difference in proportion 95% confidence interval and compare your interval with the almanac statistic. So we are, again, sorry, I'm going to write down here. We are 95% confident that the difference of proportions of, I think it's the, um, the college graduates, males to females in that specific orders, um, is captured by the interval provided from negative 0 0.06 comma 0 0.066. So that is the answer that I've actually found. And you're actually going to use that and then just put them in the interpretation. If you read the answer key carefully, it says we are 95% confident, um, confident that the interval uh, captures the difference of the proportion of 25 or older men who complete four more years of college. So they put a little bit more elaborate context of the question. I'll uh, complete the four more years of college. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually take a look at the almanac. Um, we have the females and for males, 27.3, so 0.278 minus 0.36. We have 0 0.042. Is that captured within this boundary, yes or no? The answer is yes. So because um, 0 0.04 is less than 0 0.06. So I believe the almanac is at 0 0.042. Since this is captured in a confidence interval, we agree with the almanac. All right, so in this particular question, I did not do state and do. State would be the uh, construct the 95% confidence with the given proportion of the college graduate, 25 years or older, blah, blah, blah. So that would be the state portion. The plan, you will have to check for the condition NP greater than equal to 10. There are actually three more. N times one minus P is greater than equal to 10 for both men and female. Um, N is... Uh, what is it, 0 0.1 N, it's gotta be less than that. So 10% of the sample, or uh, the sample has to be within 10% of the population and the sample has to be randomized. So we see the word random here. So everything should check out. What's the test? It's the two proportion Z test because we're talking about two separate things. And I believe that's what they said also uh, for plant. Yep, so we're, con it doesn't really specific, specifically say it, but we're going to construct a two proportion Z test and we're going to find out the proportions from there. So whenever they ask you to construct a 95% confidence interval, you're always going to be utilizing those four things, state, plan, do, and interpret here. Okay, sorry, the answer key is, answer is all over the place. Um, hope this helped in getting through most of the questions, I mean, all the questions here. Good luck tomorrow, guys. But as you can see, the vast majority of the questions really deal in free response. It's all about state plan, state plan, do and interpret, and multiple choice, understand how to what happens when the sample size increases, when it decreases, confidence level, um, the formula, uh, P is one, a P is 0 0.5 when they don't specify it and they ask you for the sample size, all those wonderful things. All right, thank you so much, guys. I hope this helped, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.